Today we pay tribute to the friends we lost along the way. Hello fellow mushroom people and welcome to this video. Today I want to talk about the books that I did not finish and by that I don't mean any of those Kindle Unlimited books where you just check out the first 10 pages and decide the book's not for you. Um, and I don't mean the books that I already talked about that I DNF'd. Um, I will mention them, but I, I think that I talked about them in other videos, so I don't want this to get too long. <laughs> Um, but I have, I still have a pretty long list of books that I did not finish and that I want to talk about more in detail. And with that out of the way, let me just breeze uh, through the books that I DNF'd in the first, I think, five, four, four to five months um, of this year. Uh, the first one is uh, The Bone Season, which I did not like at all. I think neither the setting nor the characters spoke to me, so I I listened to this on audio and I got quite far into this, maybe one third or even half, and it just, the relationship, um, it just wasn't for me at all. Uh, the next one that I DNF'd also on audio uh, was Sorcery of Thorns. Um, this book was just it was a fine book um i just didn't think it was that interesting and i did not feel like it was fulfilling enough for me to keep reading um i just thought that i could spend my time with better books and that's why i dnf'd it the next book on my list is Legendborn. Um, I think I've talked about Legendborn quite a few times. I gave it away, so there I will never pick it up again. Um, this book, I could not understand the hype at all. It was just, yeah, a check out. I have a mini rant about Legendborn, so if you want to know what I think about Legendborn, just check out my... February, May, wrap up something. The next book that I DNF'd is The Absolute Book, which was praised on some website as the best fantasy ever or something. And it was just confusing. So for me, I read it, I got like 100, 200 pages in, I think 200. Um, and that's when I decided that it didn't give me anything. It was, it was boring and confusing. It was mostly confusing and I did not know what was going on at any given moment. And I mean, I like some weird stuff and I uh, like some confusing stuff, but I got nothing out of this book. It just, it, I don't know. It, it just felt so, so wrong. So just confusing. Why? I, I I didn't get it. So the next one that I DNF was Library of the Unwritten. Um, I picked this up because I did the uh, first paragraph challenge and it sounded interesting. But to me it gave off this feeling as a like one of those cheap fantasy television shows. Um, but not in a good way. So it wasn't trashy enough for me to be enjoyed on this kind of level. It was just not that interesting. There were a bunch of characters who I thought were not that interesting. Then you had hell and heaven and angels and all that stuff, which I think is okay. And I could see this being on one of those television network thingies where you have 24 episodes a season and the budget is this big. Um, that's how it felt to me, uh, but not in an entertaining way. And that's why I decided to, to drop it. So the next book on my list is Descendant of the Crane. And this one just didn't 
click with me, I think. Um, uh, I just felt that it was boring and I, I can't forgive, I don't know, crappy world building, unlikable characters or un uninteresting characters as well, but the plot was just... I, I I didn't find anything in this book that um, satisfied me and so I decided to let it go. Um, yeah, but I, I think I talk about this a little bit more in detail uh, in another video. So now let's dive into the books that I haven't talked about yet um, because I DNF them since the last time I talked about my DNFs. Uh, the first book on this list is The Bone Ships. Um, this one, I was listening to the audiobook and I just... So the problem I had with this book is not that it isn't interesting. I think it has quite an interesting world. So there's those ships made out of dragon bones and you have those two rivaling kingdoms or nations and they always build their ships and fight against each other and that's... They don't even know why they fight, I think. They just fight because of reasons, because the other nation is the enemy and they have to fight them. Um, the main character was very whiny in the beginning and that annoyed me a lot. <laughs> he was so he was the captain of one of those bone ships and then some woman came along and she was like I I want to be captain now and she beat his ass and that's why he had to give up his uh captainhood. Um and then he was very whiny about it which was annoying and she was so she, clearly she was the superior captain um, because the ship they were on was one of the condemned so they were not in the regular fleet they were kind of outlaws of the system um, and theirs was a ship, a ship people got sent to who were criminals and like outlaws um, yeah, and like I said she was the way better captain. <laughs> so she was a real captain and he was so whiny about it. Um, but I got the feeling that the plot wasn't really going anywhere for quite some time. Um, and normally I don't mind um, if the characters are interesting enough and the world is interesting enough. Uh, but I didn't really get that from this book and... Uh, I, I didn't feel like returning to this world, um, which is why I ultimately decided to drop this book after quite some time. So I gave it some time. It wasn't just a, a one day decision. I thought about it a lot, um, but I it just wasn't for me. And, and I don't think that I really like ship books. I, I don't know why. I don't really like to read about those piracy kind of books. It just isn't... They have to have a an interesting twist on things. I, if, otherwise they don't work for me usually. So the next book on this list is The Guest List, <laughs> which is a suspense thriller book, um, which I also listened to on audio when I went to bed. Maybe that didn't help the book. Um, but I was looking for an interesting thriller story or suspense story. It's not really that thriller-like because there's not that much happening. And um, so the book is structured in a way where you have... So there's a wedding and people get invited to this island and then you get to see them arriving on the island one by one. Um, and there's always shorter chapters that a deal with what happens on the wedding night because apparently someone died or something. Well, sometimes something uh, happens and we see how the characters live up until this point. Um, I think the main problem with this book I had was that those shorter chapters dealing with this incident um, were not that interesting to me and it didn't grab me. So I wasn't that curious to find out what was going on on this. I think it was the wedding night. Um, 
And also, most of the characters were just so unlikable. And there were... Uh, I, I just didn't like them. I think there was one group of men with the, um, the groom and his bros. And they... They're... So they had some conversations which were so manly, but in this kind of bro dude talk way that I didn't like at all. And I, th I think it's just, there was, I, okay, I did not care what was going to happen to those characters because I didn't care about them at all. And I think that killed the story for me. I don't usually have to have interesting characters in a thriller or suspense book. Um, but then something has to happen and more, most of the time we spend with those characters in those very meaningless situations and that didn't, didn't bump up my interest for finding out what was happening on this wedding night. And so I decided to let it go because I was listening to this book for over a long period of time and after one or two months, I had forgotten most of those characters and who they were, and I wouldn't. I don't. I don't think I would have been able to just continue on with the story because I had forgotten about most of it. Okay, so the next DNF on my list is the Magicians. Um, I was watching the TV series with my girlfriend, and. I felt like the pacing was all over the place in this TV series, um, but that it had an interesting concept. And that's why I checked out the first book. It turns out the pacing in the first book is even more messed up than the pacing in the TV series. Things move way, way, way too fast. So the story is about this guy who joins this wizard college um, and in the series, we follow his first year at this magic college. And in the book, we follow his first four years in this magic college. And that's just the first half of the book. Um, it's insane. So basically, um, why I was intrigued by the story is that there is a collection of novels in this book. Um, that plays a bigger role in the story. So um, I think the books are called the Philroy uh, books and the main character from the book, the magicians, read those stories when he was a kid and he always felt like they um, were very special to him. And on the back of the book, the, the magician's book, the real book, um, it's hinted at that those stories might um, have a root in reality. And that's, that was the part that I was interested in. Um, but we didn't get any of that in the TV series, not really, just some tiny, tiny glimpses. And I didn't get any of this in the book for the first 260 pages or something. Um, which was very uncool because that was what I was hoping to get out of this book, what I didn't get from the series. Um, but I didn't get that. And let me just say that this book has some of the most unlikable characters that I've ever read about. The main character, he's such a... No, why? I I wouldn't want to touch this guy from 10 meters away with a stick because he's so... I just... He's... I, I can't really describe what he is. He's just very not... Intre no, he is not interesting. He's just very unlikable. And most of his companions are the same level of unlikable. So uh, I thought that when he would be finished with his college, that things would pick up. But then he just joins his um, other friends who had left college a year before him. And they go partying and behaving like total dickheads. And it's so unsatisfying to read because I was like, just do something. Just don't be horrible people. And I don't enjoy reading about horrible people all of the time um, if things are not interesting. Um, and that's why I ultimately decided to just let it go um, because I, di I did not feel like uh, reading about this cast of characters anymore. 
So the next one that I DNF'd is a book that I was kind of looking forward to because it sounded quite interesting. Um, and that is The Helm of Midnight. So this is one bigger fantasy book in a um, fantasy series. So it's the first one and I think it was published in May or something. Um, and I was very intrigued because um, this book is set in a darker setting and there is the city where all the stuff takes place um, and there are very gruesome murders and um, I think that that was what interested me. Um, there was also a quite interesting magic system so in this world there is some sciency magic I forgot the name but basically when people die they can have people make their death masks so that their knowledge will live on and other people can pick up those masks put them on the face and get their knowledge of whatever so basically um you can get knowledge in medicine or fighting skills and whatever you want um and those masks um they also have a piece of the personality from the person it was made from. Um, so if your mind is not strong enough, those masks may overtake you and just kind of annihilate your own personality. And I think that's a very cool concept. Um, unfortunately, though, it's just... Uh, it was quite boring. So in the book, we follow the main character Krona, who's the person who investigates the murders. Then we have chapters where we follow the murderer 10 years past. And then we have chapters where we follow a different person who is kind of involved um, in those murders, but has, she, so she has another plot um, concerning herself. And, um, I thought that the co the concept was really interesting. It's also the first book in a series. And I think it started off with quite a lot of super over the top killing. Um, and I think I would, I, it would have been interesting to see where it was going. Um, there were also some things hinted at with an interesting um, belief system. So there were a lot of deities and um, it was hinted at that there was larger, bigger thing going on in the background, um, which I thought was interesting, but the overall, the overall story didn't grab me. So I didn't find myself caring about how those parts of the book were connected and how, so who the killer was and all that stuff. I just... Uh, there was just a lot going on and it got kind of messy at times um, and I just didn't feel like I needed to finish this book. Um, I found myself picking it up less often and after a while I forgot a lot of the things that happened in the book and that's why I didn't finish it. So the next one I have on this list is another one that was a very anticipated read for me and that is uh, The Unbroken. Um, so this book is basically about two countries and one of those countries invaded the other one and um, colonized them and took some children from the colonized country back home with them to train as soldiers. But in the colonizer country those sands they are called um, are worth nothing and they don't have any freedoms and they have to work for their colonizers um, which is not that great um, and I think many people were looking forward to this book many people liked this book I thought it was very boring um, so basically we follow Terrain who is one of those um, people in the army who are originally from the colonized country but got taken away and she returns to her homeland which she left when she was like four years old um, and there 
she meets the princess from the colonizers who also got sent to the country to like be there and uh, polish her ruler skills and there's also a rebellion going on and there is a possible love story between um, Terrain and the princess but I just didn't care about any of it. I got the feeling that the writing was quite confusing at times um, and that the, the characters weren't that interesting. Also, the rebellion was... Ah, I just... I think this one is hard to explain for me because I, I was generally... I was very interested in this book and I was uh, very eager to pick it up. I also... So I got a physical copy and then I picked up the audiobook as well to see if... Um, that would help me get through the book because I wanted to like this book um, but I just felt like it wasn't worth my time and that I wasn't enjoying myself um, and it just didn't give me much so there was some magic but it wasn't really that much of a focus um, in the story it just I don't I just think that the book wasn't for me <laughs> and um, I'm kind of sad about it because I was looking forward to this book and I I didn't like it. I didn't really like it. So the next book that I DNF'd is Iron Prince. Um, I, I, I read this on my Kindle and uh, this book is about... Um, people fighting in colosseums even though they're in the military because they get those strength enhancing computer devices and they battle for show um, so we are following a young guy named Ray I think and he wants to become one of those fighters um, but he has very limited physical capabilities and um, a very rare bone sickness um, which is why he has to undergo surgeries on a regular basis and he isn't really cut out to be a fighter but he wants it so much that he decides to apply anyways and he gets accepted into one of those very um, prestigious military academies and um, gets his cat device that's what those machines are called that they put on their kids to um, make them fight. Um, I picked this book up because at the time I was watching an anime series and then I googled books like anime and that's one of the books that I got. Um, and I, I think it's a lit RPG book. So the character he has stats and those stats are numbers. Um, and at the end or the beginning of each chapter, you always get his stat update where they say speed improved from F5 to F4 or something like that. And that was getting very annoying after the first two times it happened. Um, and I didn't like the main character. I think I talked about the book a bit in my Tropes I Didn't Like video because he was one of those characters where everyone said that he is not good. So we are supposed to believe that he's the underdog but then he comes around and is good. So he does have skills and he's not bad at everything um, and I don't like that. I didn't like that kind of character that he was. Um, it was very annoying to me and I read 300 pages of this book so it's a 900 page novel um, so I got quite far in. Um, but ultimately, I just didn't feel like I would like it um, that much, and so I dropped it. So the next book I have on my list is The Queen of the Conquered. Um, I don't even know why I picked this book up. I just... Uh, it was kind of a random decision. Um, I think I read about 30% of this book, and then I decided to drop it. Um, so the book is about 
another colonized country. <laughs> um, this time it's um, some islands that I think vaguely resemble the Caribbean islands. Um, and they have been colonized by people from what I assume are Norway or Denmark people, probably. And they rule on those islands and all the dark-skinned people are slaves. So our main character, she's dark-skinned, but she belongs to those colonizer families um, because of some reason that I kind of forgot. I think maybe that one of her ancestors married into one of those colonizer families. I think that was the case, yeah. Um, and so she, on one hand, is one of the colonizer families, but on the other hand, she's also dark-skinned and all the other colonizer families hate her. Um, and the story is about um, the time where the overlord of the islands, he decides to step down and he's looking for his successor. And so she journeys to the main island of those islands and um, wants to convince him to make her the next overlord. <laughs> um, I just... So there's also magic in the story. Um, she has magic. She she can manipulate people, I think. Um, but I think th so. First of all, the main character she's very unlikable uh, because she wants revenge on all those families, and she's one of those revenge characters that, at least in the, the part of the book that I read. Um, doesn't really care about anything that stands in her way uh, to get that revenge. And I always think that that's kind of annoying. Also, the book to me felt a little bit boring. Uh, so it just wasn't... The, so the world wasn't that interesting to me. Um, and the characters weren't that interesting as well. Um, then I, I, so what I, what else I didn't like was that I think there were no or barely any positive interactions between people, um, just because everyone hated her and she hated everyone else, um, except her maid. Um, and they also had a history of traveling around the world, which was told in like a few sentences. I was like, why don't you tell us this story? That sounds way more interesting. Um, yeah, but basically I, I think I quit the book around the time she arrived on this main island um, for the successor um, thing. <laughs> um, and maybe things would have picked up from there. I don't know. I just, I just thought that it wasn't worth my time um, and that's why I DNF this book. Okay, the last book that I have on my list is The Infinity Chords, which is a YA book that has an interesting concept. So the story is about our main character Nami, who dies. This is not a spoiler, this happens in the first, second chapter. And she ends up in the afterlife only that this afterlife has been hacked by Alexa, basically. And she joins a group of rebels to fight Alexa, who's called Ophelia, I think, in the story. Um, it's quite a ludicrous concept. And <laughs> I, I felt like it wasn't that well done. So, basically, in this afterlife, there is four chords. Um, one is called infinity, then we have war, death, and famine, I, I think. And the main story takes place in infinity. Um, all those chords have princes, who are probably very, very handsome. Um, I just... I didn't feel like this kind of afterlife made any sense. It was just so confusing and felt like it wasn't really thought through. Um, also, this rebellion that's going on in the underground of the afterlife, um, it just, 
and nothing made sense to me. And so basically when you die, you end up in this, in this afterlife. But since Alexa has hacked this afterlife, she turns all those humans into slaves because she hates humans. Um, because humans treated her badly, I guess. And um, it just was so weird. Um, the people that are in this rebellion compound, they are still normal people. Um, and they fight against Alexa and her princess. It was just so... So for me, this world was so messy. I... I couldn't get over it, to be honest. It just was... So what's going on? What the hell is going on with this world? Also, she gets a love interest who's very broody. Um, and I bet... So because she was supposed to infiltrate the, the castle where one of those handsome princes was, then there would have been a love triangle. And I didn't care for it at all. <laughs> just... Everything felt so wrong and everything felt like I wouldn't enjoy it. Um, and that's why I decided to, to drop this book. It just didn't do it for me at all. Also, angry main character. I mean, she, she died. So yeah, I guess she has a reason to be angry, but uh, no. Yeah, I just, just, it, no, I just didn't feel this book at all. <laughs> Okay, so I feel like I've talked for hours and I'm done. So those are all the books that I DNF'd um, this year so far. I didn't include the books that I DNF'd but want to try again in the future. Um, I think that those will be read still sometime in the future. Uh, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, and if you did, you are very welcome to leave a like and a comment and subscribe to this channel. Um, I also talk about books that I did enjoy sometimes, so... But those I didn't really enjoy. Um, yeah, anyways, uh, have a great day, evening, morning, whatever, wherever you are, and see you again next time.